This video will cover the topic, finding zeros of a polynomial function written in factored form. What does it mean when a function is in factored form? We can get a function into factored form by breaking up a function found in standard form into its factors. If we multiply the factors together, we can get the function back into standard form. For example, g of x equals x squared minus 36 represents the same function as g of x equals x minus 6 times x plus 6. The first one is written in standard form, and the second one is in factored form. Factored form is what we will be working with in this topic. What are the zeros of a function? The real zeros of a function are any real values of x for which f of x equals 0. Let's try to find the zeros of the function f of x equals 3 times x minus 6 times x squared minus 49 times x plus 6 quantity squared. How can we find these real zeros? Good question. We can set our function f of x equal to 0 and solve for x. When we plug in any value for x, each of these factors will equal some number, and those numbers will be multiplied to find the value of f of x. Remember that in order for the product of any numbers to equal 0, at least one of the factors must be 0. This means that in order for this function to equal 0, one of these factors must equal 0. How does this help us find the real zeros of this function? Knowing this, we can set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. If we find an x value that makes one of our factors equal 0, then the whole function will equal 0, and we found what we call a zero of our function. First, we must factor the polynomials we still have in this equation. We must factor the polynomial x squared minus 49 and x plus 6 quantity squared. The polynomial x squared minus 49 can be factored into x minus 7 and x plus 7. x plus 6 quantity squared can be broken into x plus 6 and x plus 6. So now that we have our function completely factored, we will write each of our factors 3, x minus 6, x minus 7, x plus 7, x plus 6, and x plus 6 again equal to 0 to solve for the real zeros of the function. We know that the factor 3 does not equal 0, so we do not get an answer by setting this factor equal to 0. This means that this factor cannot be the one to make the entire product equal 0. Now we can solve the other factors we set equal to 0 for x to find the real zeros of this function. Let's start with x minus 6 equals 0. If we add 6 to both sides, the negative 6 and the positive 6 cancel out, resulting in x equals 6. This is our first real 0. Next, we have the factor x minus 7 set equal to 0. We will add 7 to both sides, giving us the real 0 of x equals 7. Now, we have the factor x plus 7 set equal to 0, and we can subtract 7 from both sides to get our third real 0 of x equals negative 7. Why don't you try solving for x in the last couple of factors set equal to 0? Okay, well for the first factor, we will have to subtract 6 from both sides, giving us x equals negative 6. We can follow the same process for the last factor as well. Very good. These are our last real zeros. So we found that the function f of x has the real zeros of 6, 7, negative 7, negative 6, and negative 6 again. Let me make sure I understand how we got this answer. So first, we set all of our factors equal to 0. And then we solved each factor for x to get us all the possible real zeros for the function. That is correct. Sounds like you understand this topic. 